Thanks for checking out the Middle School Ministry at Mount Pleasant Christian Church. Uh, today we are on week four of our summer road trip series. We have a special um, guest speaker today. It's our summer youth ministry intern, Spencer Piercefield. He's going to be teaching us about Paul's visit uh, when he was in Athens, what he experienced there, and how that can encourage and challenge us when it comes to sharing our faith with our friends. So without further ado, here's Spencer with today's message. Have you guys ever had a really frustrating conversation? When I was in middle school, I feel like the two frustrating conversations I was always having were with my parents. And one of them was when I was wanting to go over to a friend's house or I was trying to get a friend to come over to my house. And for whatever reason, they just weren't letting that happen. The other conversation is when I was trying to convince my parents why we should have pizza every night instead of whatever they were going to make. We can always have frustrating conversations. And when I think about this, I think about times when I've tried to share my faith with other people. I remember specifically to a few years ago when I tried to tell one of my friends about God, and I could tell right from the beginning of the conversation that it just wasn't going to go well. It seemed like they weren't very interested in what I had to say. Every five words or so, they interrupted me and um, started arguing with me, and by the end of the conversation, they just walked away laughing. For me, this was super frustrating, but I think that I'm not the only one who's had a frustrating conversation when we tried to share our faith. Today, we're going to talk about how we can be intentional in sharing our faith with our friends who don't know who Jesus is. The big idea for today is spiritual influence. And the truth is that we all have influence, whether that's with our friends, with our classmates, with our neighbors, with our family members. We all have people that we have influence with. And we're going to talk about how we can use that influence to have a conversation about God and share our faith with that person. But I know that this is a hard thing for a lot of us to do. And when I say share your faith with your friends, I think that a lot of us probably have an initial reaction. Some of us might get super nervous and uh, even scared and, and not want to do that. Some of us, we might think to a time where we've had that conversation and it didn't go well. So we think that that's not for us and, and someone else will do that. Some of us, we might be really excited about this and, and want to share our faith with other people. But I know for me, this has never really been an easy thing to do. For me, I, I tend to get pretty nervous even just thinking about talking about my faith with other people. But the question is, and some of us might have this question, is why is there so little interest in Jesus? Maybe you've, you've wanted to have a conversation with one of your friends about who Jesus is, but it just doesn't seem like they're interested. You might be sitting here wondering how you're supposed to have a conversation about your faith when it seems like that other person doesn't even want to listen or they don't care about Jesus. But I want you to think about this, and this is kind of going to be the theme of, of what we talk about in this message is what interest do your friends have that you can use to have a, a conversation about God? I'm guessing if you're friends with someone, then you have something in common. Whether it's the sports you play, the uh, what you like to do in your free time, maybe you guys are neighbors or classmates, um, you enjoy watching the same type of movies, whatever it is, I'm guessing you have something in common with your friends. And what we want to talk about and think about is what interest do you have with those friends that you could use to connect having a conversation about your faith? As we transition into our story for today, we're going to see ex that that's exactly how Paul was able to have a conversation about God with the people of Athens. So we're going to look at the Manga Metamorphosis book, and we're going to look at this story of uh, Paul all, as he's on his journey. And, and he goes from uh, Berea, where he was, and, and what we talked about in our last message, and he starts to travel down to Athens. So in this, um, he goes by himself. He was with Silas and Timothy, but... He decides to sail to Athens by himself, and this is where our story is going to pick up. So as Paul gets to Athens, he knows that this is a city of philosophers. He knows that the people here are highly educated. They know a lot about, or they think they know a lot about how, how things work, how the world works. Um, and one of the first things that he notices when he's in this city is all the different idols that the people have set up. So these people, they have these idols, which are just these man-made statues and, and different things that they're worshiping and they're putting in the place of God. Um, and that's one of the first things that Paul notices when he's in the city. He knows that these people have always been open to conversation, and so he, he wastes no time to start debating with the people about what they believe versus what he believes. Initially, the people, uh, they don't really buy what he's trying to say. They, they kind of question who he is and what he's saying. Um, and so what they say 
is that they know what they believe. They kind of puff themselves up and say that we're educated. We know, we know the truth. Who are you to kind of tell us what to believe? But they do say if you have something new and, and you want to tell people about it, then you can come to, to the Areopagus, which it says that this is the high council of the city of Athens. So basically, this is where the highest of high people are in the city. And so they say that he can come um, and he can share what he's trying to tell them with these people. So Paul, he jumps on this opportunity and, and he decides to go with these people. And they think he's kind of setting them up for failure. You can see that it says, country boy meets the council. This will be fun. So they think he's going to go and he's going to just get totally embarrassed. They don't think he's very educated or, or really knows what he's talking about. And so they go up to this place where the highest of high people are. Um, and the person that takes him there kind of asks him if, if he still feels like talking, if he's, if he's too nervous, if he wants to back out. But Paul, um, he says this is perfect. And he takes advantage of the opportunity. Um, and it says that if he was nervous, he didn't show it. So he just jumps right in and, and he's eager to share with these people about who God is. And so he talks, he first starts off by saying that he knows these are religious people. Um, he knows that these people have gods and, and that they have things that they worship. And then he says that when he was in the city, he saw the altars, he saw the shrines, he saw the things that they were doing. And he noticed one, one altar that said to an unknown God. And he uses this and he says, I can tell you about this God, this God that you're, you're worshiping, but you don't even know who it is. I can tell you who that is. And so he goes in and he starts telling them about the God that we, we serve. He talks to them about how he's the creator of the universe and, and how he created us, he created the world. He created land, created animals. He talks about how this is the God that deserves our worship, not the gods that you guys create, but the God who is the creator of us. He says that this is a God that wants to have a relationship with us. He wants to, to be in that relationship. And, and he showed that by sending Jesus to the earth. Jesus was someone that came to represent him, ultimately died on the cross for you and for me, um, and was raised three days later. And these people, there's a couple different uh, reactions to what Paul is saying. Some people think he's crazy. Um, they have no clue what he's saying or where he's coming from. They They think all he's saying is, kind of nonsense. And, and some people just disagree that they, they don't want to hear anymore. Um, but then there's one person that is intrigued. And so they catch Paul as he's walking out and they say that they want to learn more about what he's saying. And so Paul obviously is excited about this. Um, and the people ask Paul to stay a little bit longer, uh, to live with them and to continue to teach these people about the God that Paul is talking about. There are only a few people, um, but Paul used this opportunity to spread the message about God. And it says that Paul ended up staying for three more weeks in Athens to continue to teaching, to continue teaching about God. And so one of the things that I want us to see from this is that Paul cared that these people didn't know who God was. For Paul, as he's in Athens, the first thing that he sees is all these different idols. So to, immediately he knows that these people don't know who God is. They're spending their time worshiping these man-made gods, these statues that aren't the God that you and I serve. And Paul knows that these people don't know who God is. But the thing is that Paul cared that they didn't know who he was. He was upset. In verse 16, it says that he was deeply troubled. And in the original language, what this word means is that he had a, a sudden or violent emotion. So when he, when he learned that these people were worshiping idols and not God, he was angry about it. But then he had uh, grief and he was upset because they didn't know the truth about the one true God. And because of this, he went on to share his knowledge with these people about who God is. Paul, he had seen something that bothered him so much that he couldn't help but doing something about it. For him, there was no other option but to share the truth about who God is. And so my question for us is, do you care that people don't know God. The truth is, there's a lot of people, probably more than we would think, that don't know who God is. There's a lot of people in your schools, on your teams, in your neighborhoods who don't know who God is. And my question for us is, do you care that they don't know? And what I want us to do, if you have a, a piece of paper or a post-it note, you can take that out. And I want you to think about people in your life, people that you're friends with, 
uh, that you that don't know who God is. And what I want you to do is I want you to write those names down on that piece of paper. We'll come back to that to a little bit, but if you need to pause the video to do that, just take some time to think about friends or people in your life who don't know who God is and write those names down on a piece of paper. Paul, he deeply cared about the people of Athens um, and how they didn't know who God was. Maybe you're like Paul and you do care, but you don't really know how to go about sharing your faith with these people. If we look back at this story, we can learn a lot from Paul and how he went about sharing his faith. Because the first thing that he did is he found a way to connect with these people. Paul found a way to connect with them when he was sharing his faith with them. Verses 22 and 23, they say, So Paul, standing before the council, addressed them as follows. Men of Athens, I know that you are very religious in every way. For as I was walking along, I saw your many shrines, and one of your altars had this inscription on it, to an unknown God. And this God whom you worship without knowing is the one that I'm telling you about. For Paul, he studied Greek culture and he knew what these people believed. And he used that, he used his knowledge about these people to start a conversation about the God that he served. He did this because he knew it would capture their attention and it would intrigue them in a way that they would want to have this conversation and they would want to listen to what he was saying. Paul, he starts off this conversation by connecting with them. He brings up that when he got into the city, he saw the idols, he saw the shrines that they had, but he has knowledge, he has the truth that they don't have. Paul, he was able to find common ground with these people and he found a way to connect with them and then he used that connection to share with them about who God is. And so what I want you to do now with that piece of paper and those names that you wrote down is think about that person and think about what you share in common with them. Think about similar interests that you have, whether that's you guys play the same sports, um, you enjoy doing the same thing in your free time, you enjoy the same music, whatever it is, think about what you share in common with that person and write that down next to their name. Because for Paul, he found a way to connect with them. And what we want to do when we share our faith is find a way to connect with our friends. We want to share our faith in a way that they'll understand. For me in high school, when I was telling one of my friends about God, I used basketball. So me and this particular friend, we both loved basketball. We went and we worked out together and then I was taking him home and we were just talking about basketball and how the workout was. And I kind of just said to him that I use basketball as a way to worship. So for me, I know that God gave me the gifts and the ability to play basketball. And so I use that those gifts and abilities in return to worship God. Because I, I said that he asked questions, he asked about, about God and why I do that. And we were able to have a whole conversation about God and who Jesus is just because I, I started that conversation talking about basketball. For Paul, he used his knowledge as a way to relate with the people of Athens. And because he did this, it gave him the opportunity to share with all these people about who God is. For us, if we find a way to connect with our friends that don't know God, then we'll be able to share our faith in a way that they will understand. And that's the end goal. We want to share our faith in a way that our friends will understand. For you, you might be sitting here and thinking that there's no way you can you can be like Paul and tell people about God the way that he did. But I have a couple of challenges for you that will hopefully help push us in this direction. The first challenge is for you to build a bridge. So hopefully you've written down some names or you have some names in your head and you have some connection or similar interest. What I want you to do is, is use your common interest, use your, your similar interest to build a bridge with that person. Use whatever that is to start a conversation about God. Because the truth is, when we follow Jesus, Jesus becomes the center of everything in our life. He becomes the center of what we do in our free time, of our relationships, of every encounter we have. He's at the center of it. And so I think because of that, we'll be able to use whatever similar thing that we have with our friend to start a conversation about who he is. My next challenge is to pray. Pray for those friends that you wrote down. Pray for the courage to speak truth and, and tell them about God. Pray after you spend time with them that God will move in their heart and work in their heart about the conversation that you had. Just pray for them. Because the truth is, if we're going to be people that share the truth about God, we can't try to do that on our own. It can be hard. It can be challenging. But partner with God. Pray. Ask Him to equip you, to enable you to share the truth about who He is. 
And my last challenge for us is to memorize Romans 10, 13 through 14. This verse says, For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. But how can they call on him to save them unless they believe in him? And how, how can they believe in him if they've never heard about him? And how can they hear about him unless someone tells them? This verse is a great reminder that it's our responsibility to tell other people about who God is. This verse says that people, they might be ready to accept and believe in God, but they can't do that if they don't know who he is. And they can't know who he is if someone doesn't tell them. Thinking about your friend or the person that you wrote down, how are they going to know about God if no one tells them? And what if God, he put you in their life for the reason of telling them about who he is? My hope and, and my prayer is that all of us care about people who don't know who Jesus is. We know that Paul cared about them and he was deeply upset when he learned that these people didn't know about who God was. God had done such a work in his life that he wanted to continue to tell people about who he is. The way he did this was by connecting with them. He built a bridge and he shared his faith in a way that these people would understand. And what I encourage and challenge all of us to do is find a way to share your faith in a way that your friends will understand. Find a way to connect with them and use that connection to start a conversation. And I want you for just a second to just imagine what would happen if we all did this. If we were all intentional about talking about God with our unchurched friends, what would happen if we did that? Imagine if the things that you view are just fun, like for me, basketball. Imagine if that's the exact thing that God uses to bring someone to him. Imagine what it would be like if your unchurched friends became followers of Jesus. But what you do, your next steps determine if those are dreams or if those can become visions and realities for the future. Let's pray. God, thank you for just whoever's listening to this and, and taking the time to just seek you out and learn more about you, God. I pray that you just give this person the courage and the strength to share with the per people that they wrote down about who you are. It's because of your love and what you've done in our life that we want to continue to tell people about who you are and, and share your truth with other people, God. We thank you for your son and what he did for us on the cross. And it's his name I pray. Amen.